l'Università Federale di Rio Grande del Nord in Brasile, con la quale noi della Facoltà di Scienze della Comunicazione Sociale dell'Università Salesiana abbiamo un accordo di cooperazione scientifica e didattica, un accordo di cotutela. Modererà l'incontro eh, il professor Carlos Alberto Oliveira, eh, che è docente all'Università del Nord di Brasile e eh, insieme agli altri membri, i suoi colleghi che ora vi nominerò, eh, è, è, conduce ed è responsabile del laboratorio di innovazione tecnologica in salute della medesima università. Parteciperanno i seguenti docenti, Gustavo Fontura de Susa, Ignazio Sanchez Grendiz, Gendritz, spero di non sbagliare la pronuncia, <ride> Sedir Grillo de Moraes, e lascio subito la parola a Carlos Alberto Olivera. Il titolo dell'intervento è il seguente: The Artificial Intelligence in the Health, Our Experience as a Research Laboratory in Northeast of Brazil. Buon ascolto e buona visione. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Uh, good morning to all of you who are attending this conference. Uh, I'm Carlos Alberto Oliveira. I'm Deputy Director of the Multidisciplinary Institute of Human Development with Technologies at the State University of Rio de Janeiro. I am an executive member at the International Council for Open and Distance Education, an external expert for the World Health Organization in the strategy of learning. Uh, also, I am a researcher at LAIS, who is sponsoring the who is one of the sponsors of this session. Uh, LAIS, uh, we are very proud to say we are the first research laboratory located in a Brazilian university hospital at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte. Uh, we uh, promote technological innovation in health, aiming to improve the quality of services offered by our university public health system. Uh, most of our projects are aimed at the needs of the Brazilian Unified Health System uh, and the Brazilian Ministry of Health. With the increase in the scope of LIES projects, there has been established three lines of action at LIES. One of them is the management and governance in the Ministry of Health in the, at SUS. Healthcare with emphasis on primary healthcare. Education, be, meaning education in health, lifelong uh, learning for health professionals and education for health. Proudly, we have also very proud to be located in the Brazilian Northeast region in the city of San Natal in the state of Rio Grande do Norte. And now we are going to start our session with Gustavo Fontora, who is a PhD in electrical and computer engineering from uh, UFRN. He is a professor at the Federal Institute of Education, Science and Technology of Rio Grande do Norte. He has experience in data analysis, applied statistics, intelligent information processing, and applied artificial intelligence. Uh, he is going to uh, speak on the uh, uh, intelligent information av uh, availability and access uh, to information and communication technologies. Uh, and he believes that it has formed a more connected society and provides us with interactions between people. Also, it fosters in his speak the technology-driven uh, distance education. And in this way, new methodologies have been developed to improve teaching and learning considering ODL, such as artificial intelligent methods. The main objectives of his work is going to show us the investigation of a possible association between artificial intelligence techniques and the concept of learning styles like a student's feature. Have the floor, uh, Gustavo. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Kaor. I, I say that uh, a pleasure to, to, 
uh, here in the University of Italy. And I uh, now try to explain to everyone uh, our work in, in LAIS about the artificial intelligence application in distance learning. I will share uh, my screen now. Have you seen? Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I will share it uh, to you. Uh, 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 artificial intelligence application in distance learning is a work that uh, we desenvolved Desenvolvement uh, in last year uh, in Laís uh, with uh, three students in PhD and another in, in master course. Okay, our, our contest is many courses are uh, designed for distance learning mode. Uh, Cause the COVID uh, 19 pandemic. Many schools have moved to online and remote learning or hybrid mode. Hybrid mode. So there has been an increasing need for distance learning technologies. Uh, proposed for IA in distance learning, what, what IA can uh, help uh, students and teachers and, and uh, uh, people uh, with these this, uh, possibilities? Uh, understand uh, students' behavior, uh, forecast a student's status if approved or disapproved, uh, forecast or identify students' uh, dropout, uh, and identify students' difficulties. Uh, is a, a, some examples that uh, yeah, can help uh, the, this process. Uh, if you if you talking about uh, uh, learning ed education, uh, you have a virtual learning uh, environment, VLE. VLE uh, is a system uh, that you can study, and VLE achieve data from students' actions in log data. Uh, these actions uh, that uh, students uh, do. Uh, can be described uh, students' behaviors. Uh, I, I put uh, uh, behaviors as a, a very, a very important uh, concept because behaviors is very difficult to understand. But I will try uh, to understand what uh, many uh, kinds of students uh, learns. So. Uh, Laís uh, maintains Avasus as a VLE for uh, in the half area. Here uh, we you see a uh, first page uh, of Avasus uh, from uh, UFRN sites. Some informations about the Avasus uh, today. We have uh, more uh, than uh, 60, 40,000 uh, users and more than 1.5 thousand uh, 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 involvements. And you have uh, 261 courses uh, in Avasus. Now, uh, learning style. Uh, learning style is a, a, a term uh, is, is defined as a way like individuals learn. Uh, according to the Kolbe, Kolbe uh, proposed a model of learning style, uh, are conceptual uh, as personal way of uh, processing information, feeling and behaviors in learning situations. Uh, from this, this concept, uh, there are four groups of learning styles. Uh, the group one, activist, reflector, uh, second, uh, theorist, and pragmatist. Uh, this is a, a, 
a model of Cobb's model. Uh, we have a, a everyone has the four uh, types, but one type is more important for uh, each one. Uh, active experiment uh, uh, means uh, join, the people join uh, something to learn better, or feeling, or watching, or thinking about uh, to learn better. And how, how, how can I uh, identify a uh, learning style of a student? Uh, we have two uh, possibilities. Uh, Shaya Eitin, uh, by Alonso Gallego and Honey. Uh, he's a, a survey. A survey uh, can uh, student uh, answer and identify uh, a learning style. And we have a second uh, possibility is uh, Shaya 32 by Vega in Patino, uh, is a, a, another survey uh, to identify. We use a, a Shaya 32. Uh, some questions uh, has in a, a Shaya 32 uh, are, are 32 questions, but uh, some examples, five questions here, uh, like uh, second question, for example, I often behave without considering the consequence. And the students uh, uh, mark one, two, three, or four level if uh, 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 he considers her, uh, himself. Uh, another, another way, uh, some examples of the students behavior from VL, VLE log. Uh, for example, access. Access for a uh, page. Uh, here we have a sample student one, access page is zero, uh, student two, four, and so on. Uh, some, some examples of uh, behaviors in VLA log. What are you looking for in these works? We have uh, two informations uh, here the student's behavior uh, from uh, VL, uh, VL, VLE uh, log, and we have another uh, student's uh, learning style eh, from the, the survival, uh, the answers of survival. Who, who we are uh, looking about the model uh, can uh, make a relationship between one another. Uh, how, how we investigate this? Uh, some uh, artificial intelligence techniques uh, that we use uh, to investigate uh, this relationship, like neural networks, uh, include the uh, multi-layer perceptron, uh, Hanno Forest is another, uh, self-organized mapping, and others. Uh, our experiment, uh, we use a SHIA 32, uh, applicator for uh, 3,000 students from three institutions, three, three institutions uh, Avasuis, EFRN, and UFRN. We uh, use this data to look at uh, relation between one another. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't uh, find evidence of this relationship but we identify, identify some limitations mark uh, that uh, research continue in these uh, points. Shaya surveil, uh, Shaya surveil is uh, a very uh, important uh, uh, to this research and uh, we investigate more uh, this survey. Uh, differences in distance uh, learning students to present students uh, because uh, Shaea was created to present students and we use it for distance students, for distance learning students, and char uh, characterize the students' behavior. Is, uh, one complex uh, concept is a behavior. Behavior is very difficult to define, and we uh, try to uh, uh, make a, a better defining of behavior. Uh, some uh, results of the, the first uh, part of the research is uh, correlations. We have uh, here 
uh, in this graph uh, 14, 14 uh, variables here uh, from V0 to V13. Uh, and we have a, a correlation, a, co a correlation coefficient here. And the, the most one uh, is V0 with uh, develop uh, 0.07 approximately. Uh, it's not good, not good correlation between uh, anyone. A correlation uh, from these variables to a uh, uh, learning style. Other result uh, is a confusion uh, matrix of the average, uh, average results of the multi-layer neural network. We have two informations, uh, 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 learning styles uh, from the, the survey and a learning style from a neural network uh, forecast. And the, uh, we make a, a confusion matrix. Uh, you can see that it's not good. Uh, a good result, you uh, can, you, you expect a, 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 a small uh, values uh, here in, uh, outside of the uh, primary diagonal and a, uh, more uh, more high values in the, the principal diagonal. Why uh, this research is uh, important? Uh, what is uh, the proposed proposes of this uh, results? If uh, you can identify a student type or a line styles or how uh, is the barrel uh, mod to students learning. You can uh, personalize a course for students. You create a, with uh, uh, what uh, we call a learning tracking, learning tracking, a tracking that uh, uh, each one students can be uh, to, the, to uh, have a, a barrel uh, learning help students to organize the time. It's so important. If you identify a group of students that can, uh, cannot uh, organize your type, you can uh, make some points to organize. Uh, and motivate, motivate the students uh, in uh, learning, learning education. We have uh, some uh, examples uh, of uh, students that not motivated. So some reference about this uh, work. Uh, uh, this work is, is public, uh, publishing in this uh, three, uh, 30 reference, uh, uh, Ibero-American Technologies and Aprendizage uh, Magazine, uh, and so on, uh, Mr. Professor Kalo. Thank you, Gustavo, uh, for your presentation. It's very important uh, that Gustavo uh, brings to us uh, a research that tries to identify a model that links together learning styles and students' behavior. It's not easy. Uh, it has been tried to identify uh, learning styles in distance education. But one thing that Gustavo said, which is very important, is that we have an undefined learning style when considering distance education. It's not, it's not bad. It means that when you're working with distance education, with different kinds of exercises and activities, uh, in certain way, the four learning styles can be accomplished. So instead of having in a face-to-face -face class that we have a, pre, a, a preferred learning style or preferences, uh, in distance education, what Gustavo and his research group shows us 
is that there is no such a thing as a pre-referenced or preferred learning style, but or an undefined learning style. I think that it is a very nice contribution, uh, Gustavo, uh, because uh, this correlation, uh, if you found it, it would be a surprise because it's dealing with behavior and learning styles. Congratulations. And we are now going uh, to hear uh, Mr. Ignacio Sanchez Gendris. I hope the, the surname is correct. Uh, researcher at LAIS, he's a PhD a student from the State University of Sao Paulo. He has publications in international journals and conferences, proceedings on, uh, on soundscape ecology, echoacoustics, and ecological informatics. Also with publications on issues on bio, uh, biomedical signal processing. Uh, his title today is Edgy of a Trap, data as a planning factor for health actions. A preliminary study at Natal municipality supported by artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. Uh, just an introduction, uh, dengue uh, is recognized as a health problem in tropical countries and also in Europe, for example, depending on the time of the year and the region. Uh, monitoring and control of Aedes aegypti is one of the effective actions that can be used to deal with dengue outbreaks. A usable method of monitoring the Aedes vector is by counting ovitrap eggs. The ovitraps are holders where the mosquito can depose its eggs, counting the eggs deposited in especially distributed ovary traps can serve as a proxy for levels of Aedes infestation. The present work uses a database collected in 397 ovary traps distributed in the municipality of Natal, Rio Grande do Norte, Brazil, the city of Sun. The number of eggs of each studied of trap was counted weekly during the last for years from 2016 to 2019. Results based on preliminary analysis suggest that Ovitrap's data can be informative for the task of dengue case prediction on the neighborhood of the Natal. Four weeks prior to the current week seems to be an acceptable time frame for predicting dengue case based on Ovitrap's data. So, Professor Ignacio, take the floor. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, thanks, Carlos, for, uh, for the nice presentation. Uh, I will share my uh, presentation, my slide. Um, it's okay. Uh, are, are you seeing my presentation? Yes. Well, today we will talk about uh, Ovitrap's data and how, how we can use uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence to uh, use this data for predicting dengue cases in the city of Natal, right? Um, well, as, as probably all you know, uh, dengue is a health problem principally in, in tropical and subtropical countries, but and as in other parts of the world too. Uh, dengue affects millions of people every year. Science uh, about, uh, uh, if we see uh, data of the World Health Organizations. Uh, and also, as we uh, uh, know, the transmitter of the dengue is uh, the Aedes aegypti. Uh, Aedes aegypti, also transmit other diseases like uh, chikungunya and, uh, uh, and Zika virus. So the monitoring of this vector is really important for taking health action and for planning health action, right? Uh, one of the useful methods for monitoring uh, uh, the increase 
or decrease of, of this vector is through OV traps. Here we have one OV traps. Uh, OV traps are special holders uh, that have inside a rectangular piles of material uh, like wood. And in this uh, 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 pallet, the mosquito can deposit its eggs. If we count the number of eggs in these uh, uh, pallets, we can have uh, a, a proxy that can uh, give, give us an approximation for the infestation of the mosquito. So if we distribute, as uh, we do here in Natal, these OV traps around the city, we have uh, a method that can be used to um, monitor the level of infestation of the mosquito Iris agiti, in that case, that we are working uh, on. Well, the aim of the preliminary study that we, we uh, share with you is to uh, train models that was capable of predicting the incidence of dengue in the neighborhoods of Natal. Uh, the algorithm that we used was a random forest model trained with data obtained from OV traps and dengue occurrence from uh, past weeks, right? Uh, we trained the model for two different uh, versions. We trained the random forest as regressor and also we trained uh, as classifier. As regressor, the model trying to uh, uh, try to, to predict the number of cases of dengue incidence in each, in each neighborhood of Natal and as a classifier, we will try to uh, predict the level of, of, of dengue occurrence as low, medium, or high. Uh, well, we talked so, uh, uh, earlier about the, the first explorat exploratory analysis that we do with this data. Well, the data set that we use is composed by uh, 397 OV traps distributed around the, the Natal city. Uh, these OV traps are collected every week. So we have 52 uh, weeks uh, a year, and we collect the data from 2016 to 2019. This work is done by uh, the Sonosis Center in Natal. And once the data is collected, the, the OV trap is collected every week, they count manually all the eggs for these OV traps. So we can uh, estimate the level of infestation of the mosquito. If we aggregate these OV traps by neighborhood, neighborhoods, we could, we could use this data to uh, make some, some uh, relation to dengue occurrence in that neighborhood, right? Here, I present to you uh, the data as a heat map. Here in the rows, we have the different uh, OV traps we have. 397 OV traps and each column represents a uh, week. So we have the data from January 2016 to December 2019, right? We have here four years, four complete years. And here the colors, the hot colors indicate high levels of X. Well, for aggregating the, this data set, we use uh, two OV trap index. The first was the OVTRAP positivity index, that is the relation between, between the number of positive traps divided by the number of traps, right? We have here an indicator of how many uh, traps was uh, positive, and positive is th that last as least one egg. And the other index that we use was the OVTRAP density index that is measured as the total number of eggs divided by the total number of traps. And we have uh, one idea of the density of the eggs for traps, right? Well, aggregating this, uh, we can observe some relation with dengue occurrence, as, as we see, as we show you now. Here we have the OV trap positivity index by the neighborhoods. Here we have the 36 neighborhoods of Natal, and we can observe, for example, that seems to be some kind of seasonality in the X production by this index, right? Here, we also can present the OV trap 
density index. These two index are really similar because they are computed uh, uh, on the same data set, of course. So we can also observe this kind of, of uh, periodicity. We can observe that there are some neighborhood that, that has uh, highest values. Uh, we also see the period of time where we have a higher uh, X production. So in this, uh, in this period of time, uh, the, 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 the vector increase uh, is action. So it is expected that uh, the dengue occurrence in this period could be also uh, high, right? Here, interesting, we have the heat map of the uh, dengue cases. As we can see here, it's not exactly the same, but we can see that there is some kind of uh, 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 overlap in these two uh, uh, heat maps. And also, as we can see, uh, for example, uh, there, there are some, seems to be some kind of delay between the uh, X and OV traps, uh, and the, sorry, and the dengue occurrence, right? So the next thing that we do was to, to take the, the time series for the, the OV traps and the dengue occurrence and compute, for example, the autocorrelation. Autocorrelation given give us uh, uh, numerically, numerically uh, how many weeks we do of periodicity in this time series. For that, we use the mean uh, uh, about uh, from neighborhoods. We we compute the mean for neighborhoods for dengue occurrence and for the OVTRAPS index. We compute the autocorrelation and for dengue occurrence we obtain. 56 weeks of periodicity. And for the OVTRAPS index, for the two OVTRAPS index, we obtain uh, 52 weeks. Also, we compute the fewer transform of these two, uh, these three uh, time series. And we, for all the three, obtain that the periodicity was, was 52 weeks. Uh, so the, the Fourier transform seems to be better uh, for this kind of. of of analyze to get the periodicity inside the, um, the, the, the time series. Also, we compute the cross correlation between the time series. This cross correlation gives us the idea of how many weeks of time delay we have between the dengue occurrence and uh, OV traps uh, index. So it is expected when we was, when we, we, we get an increase in the number of eggs, some weeks uh, later, we can we can uh, have some increase in dengue cases. So, when we do the cross correlation, uh, dengue occurrence seems to be three weeks uh, later than OVTRAP positivity index, and five weeks later than OVTRAP density index. Uh, the, uh, we here we do not, uh, do not of time the same time time delay, but is close. Right, and for the OVTRAP uh, positivity index, index and OVTRAP density index, we have zero weeks of time delay because they are computed on the same data set. Right, here we uh, shift the time the time series, and we have a good correlation between dengue occurrence and the uh, uh, OVTRAP uh, density index and OVTRAP positivity index. Right here, for example, we can see that between the dengue occurrence and OVTRAP positivity index, we have 0 0.7 uh, 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 correlation coefficient and 0 0.73 between dengue occurrence and OVTRAP density index, right? Well, for training uh, and testing the model, for training the model, we use as predictor the data from the four previous uh, weeks uh, of uh, OVTRAP density index and we track positivity in this. And also we use the previous week from the dengue occurrence. So based on the uh, predictors, we train the model. Yes, for each neighborhood, also we use their data and the data for the adjacent location. So if we have two neighborhoods that share uh, geographic limits, they are adjacent. So we can use the data for the, for the first neighborhood and the data for the adjacent neighborhoods to this. Well, for testing the model, 
we uh, we compute uh, uh, 100 random samples for training and testing. For each uh, uh, random sampling, we we split the data set in 80% for train and 20% for uh, testing. So we can compute some statistics of the performance of the model that in this uh, random split. Here we use as a, a coefficient, we use the correlation coefficient between the predicted value and the real value to estimate the, the performance of the model. We do, we do that because the, uh, there are difference. For example, we can use for train the models, the root mean squares, but uh, we have different level of X in the different neighborhoods. So we prefer as, as, a, premier, pre, uh, as a first approximation, this uh, correlation coefficient to estimate the performance of the model. Here are the results of the model. We train 36 models, each one model for each neighborhood, and the response based on, on the correlation coefficient are showed in this figure. For example, the mean of the, uh, the performance in here is near to 0 0.8. For, for a perfect performance, we will like we, we we will have one, uh, and for that reason, uh, I consider that this uh, uh, correlation coefficient have show shows that there are a good performance for the model, right? Uh, we also train um, a classifier as, as I said for you, and in this case, we use uh, the mean accuracy to uh, uh, to. To, to test the performance of the model. Here, the performance of the models, uh, trying to predict the dengue skies cases as low, medium, or high, was also be, uh, above 75% of accuracy, right? Uh, well, pre preliminary results. Here, uh, Jesus shows that OBITRAP can be informative for the task of dengue case prediction. Right, uh, four weeks prior, the current week seems to be an acceptable time frame for predicting dengue cases based on OVTRAP data, as we see from our cross correlation story and for the results of the predictor and the classifiers training based on random forest models. And the result indicates that quantifying ILS IGTX in a spatially distributed OVTRAPs can be valuable for planning her actions, right? Uh, as a future work, uh, we will uh, work uh, in tune the parameters of the random forest model, right? For example, the number of, 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 of trees that we will use, uh, we will also experiment with other models that re like recurrent neural, neural networks, support vector machines, uh, Unemployed methods, methods for feature selection. For example, he, we uh, work here with the heuristics of get the data from the from the neighborhood and the knee and the neighbors uh, close to that neighborhood. We can employ uh, methods for feature selection selection that can uh, auxiliate us, can improve the, the features or predictors that we will use for training the model, and it's expected that this could uh, improve the performance of the models. Also, we will try to include the weather variables as predictors. Right now, we don't have uh, the, this data for each or, or, or at least uh, for several regions in the, in, the, in, the, in the city, but we can try to include uh, uh, this kind of data. Well, uh, I would like to thank to, to Laís, uh, to, especially to Professor Ricardo Valentin, to give me the opportunity to work in this uh, very interesting project, to my college, uh, Gustavo Fontora, Daniel Ibajos, Igor Moraes, Wesley Adamo, Uson, and Patricio. I would like also to uh, thank to Sonosis Center in Natal, especially to Rodrigo Pereira, Marcia, Alexandre, Andre, and all the excellent professionals who work in that in institution. And thanks. If you have some questions, I would like to uh, answer. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ignacio. Uh, one of the things I would like you to think a little bit, Ignacio, uh, is 
if you can, if you did come to any correlation between the, the places in Natal and the echo situation, like for example, uh, devastation, uh, uh, bad care of, uh, of uh, be, uh, uh, the environment in the area. Is there any correlation that you can see from your maps uh, in which uh, forests are devastated and uh, a more arid, more cement-based uh, area in Natal have more or less? Have you tried to work with that? Keep this in your mind. We will come uh, with this question in the moment of uh, the, the questions in the session. But thank you very much. Uh, I appreciated your presentation very, very much. And now uh, we are going to hear Sejir, Sejir Moraes. Uh, he's a PhD student in computer engineering and health informatics. He says he's a specialist at UFRN, RN, research at LAIS at the UFRN. Uh, syphilis is going to be working uh, with syphilis. We have the syphilis project, which is he going to explain. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection, which the Brazilian Ministry of Health has acknowledged an epidemic since 2016. To face such a problem, it is essential to develop and implement educational actions enhanced by information and communication technologies to qualify, train, and raise awareness nationally. Uh, considering the increasing number of OER, open educational resources developed, existing open health repositories, and other digital platforms that allow interaction in the Brazilian Unified Health System, SUS, as well as the vast number of health Informa healthcare information systems. It is essential to develop solutions to efficiently recommend content according to the interests of health professionals and the current needs and priorities of SUS. We, uh, Sajiri is going to present a discussion on the information system and the strategies of recommendation system based on this scenario. Okay, so Sejis, uh, take the floor. Uh, you have to open your microphone. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Professor Carlos. Uh, well, uh, as, as you uh, introduce, uh, syphilis is a... Uh, STI, a sexually transmitted infection that uh, that has actually raised in Brazil in the last years. And currently the government is trying to create strategies in order to uh, raise awareness of the, the people and even among the professionals, the health professionals in Brazil because uh, this disease is, uh, comes with uh, a lot of prejudice and a lot of misinformation. And currently we are trying to work on that to, to bring more information to people and to professionals so we can uh, diminish the, this disease in the country. Uh, so, uh, Brazil is a really large country and we have many uh, differences in culture and in climate. The weather is totally different in several parts of Brazil. And what we try to, to create here is uh, bring all the information on diseases of Brazil. Uh, in our case, we are working specifically with syphilis, but that can be easily extended to every disease, whether it's seasonal like dengue 
uh, as Inácio told us uh, in his presentation, or uh, uh, a common disease that is recurrent uh, like syphilis. Well, in Brazil, we have several information systems that has data on public health in, for different parts of the country. Uh, however, there was a little effort to understand this, this data on public health in order to take uh, uh, great effort on educating on put in, on passing information to health professionals. So, for example, uh, in Brazil, we have uh, <clears throat> we have a national registry of health facilities, what which is what we call the CNES. The CNES has has the registration of every. Uh, primary care and primary care, uh, secondary and tertiary uh, facilities and professionals of Brazil. Also, we have the we have a system called SIDNA, which is the information system of disease notification. So, diseases like syphilis, they do have uh, it's actually approved by law that every time there is a disease, a person with a certain disease like dengue or syphilis, they should be notified to the Ministry of Health. So SINA is the system that gathered this, this information. And we have a PEMAC, which is an information system, uh, which is a kind of a census that understands the, the context of each primary care facility in Brazil. So we have actually many information systems like these that can actually provide information when together, providing uh, enough information to, to make a, a good policy, a public policy. Well, but what we are trying to do here is gather is well get this information, all of it, and create a recommendation system that say that says, oh, okay, when I have, for example, when Inácio said says about uh, dengue, uh, according to to his presentation, we can see some seasonality of dengue, and when you have uh, a, a time of the year that is close to the period of dengue, the health professionals will, ha will have uh, OERs, open uh, educational resources recommended to him or her about uh, that disease, for example. Uh, on March, when it's close to the dengue period, uh, Avasus, which is an information uh, system for uh, uh, learning environment, uh, Gustavo Fontoura said in his work that Avasus is a, a information system utilized in Brazil for health professionals with uh, more than five, 500,000 users uh, in Brazil that carries that, uh, that have health professionals using, using this platform. So our objective is to use the power of Avasus that has many students, which are health professionals, to recommend content to them that are related to the disease that uh, are happening or will happen soon in their place of work. So we use these information systems like CNS and SINA 
and PEMAC to understand the context, the context of public health, the context of the diseases that might affect that area where the professional is located. So we can recommend the, the courses for, for them. And hopefully that will uh, make uh, the, the professionals more aware of the diseases and how to treat and how to handle these situations when they are working in the primary care institutions, when they're working on hospitals. So this is a, a, a work uh, on health education that requires a great effort. Uh, the first one is to gather all this information for the, from these information systems, uh, which are not few. I, I listed just uh, three of them, but actually when we speak of health information systems uh, from the Brazilian government, we have more, uh, we have over 200 uh, information systems, which its information are not centralized. They are all separate and that requires a great effort in big data uh, acquisition and treatment and processing. And the second one is uh, to use the power of Avasus and the behavior of its users uh, to recommend content on what they want to what, what they want to see. And that's why this is a hybrid approach. And uh, aligning this with the public health needs, considering the contextual diseases in the region of the location of these professions. Uh, so, uh, well, in the context of uh, artificial intelligence, we have a specific field, which is the computational field of recommender systems. What are uh, recommender systems? They are systems uh, with a set of algorithmic approaches in order to recommend uh, content based on uh, a set of data. Usually it is uh, behavior of the user, uh, the content they access, uh, the people that uh, they, can, they, they consume, the people they talk to in the forums, considering uh, an online platform as a Vasus, and uh, many others. So, uh, actually, we have uh, actually three uh, different types of recommender systems. So, uh, what we call collaborative filtering, which make re makes recommendations looking uh, for what users uh, see, what they like, or what they dislike on certain uh, items, OERs, articles, videos, um, etc. Uh, so, if they like something, it's probably uh, they they will probably like something like that in the future. So that's that's the idea. We have content-based filtering. Uh, which is based on the content of, of the items that the user consumes immediately. So, for example, if I'm seeing right now a course about syphilis, maybe I want to see other courses, other videos, uh, other information articles about syphilis, and that has nothing to do with the behavior of the user. It has to do with the content he's seeing right now. So it's 
it's based on the content only, not on the behavior. And there are hybrid methods, which is we can use, we can balance these two approaches with, uh, in that case, content-based uh, content filtering and collaborative filtering. So we can use content representation and user similarities uh, with many techniques that can uh, enhance and even get more accurate uh, recommendations. Well, but when I say uh, when I say about these methods, uh, I mean that we'll we'll use we we'll try to use this these parameters of the user uh, behavior and the content that there is in the platforms. As well, we are also balancing the context of health, uh, public health. So we have a uh, recommendation for these both cases. So, uh, currently uh, with the syphilis uh, crisis, the professionals are uh, are not actually qualified in the management of patients with that disease. So they lack even information uh, on how to treat and how to make this, uh, how to treat patients and even how to identify uh, the disease. So uh, that's what we, we're approaching. So currently, uh, this is a work in progress. We are actually uh, with, in partnership with the University of Lorraine. University of Lorraine actually works uh, with uh, with educational uh, resources and recommender systems and. Here in Brazil, we have a really large set of data and we'll try to uh, combine these, these uh, advantages of each uh, institution, the set of data and the workforce. And this is a work uh, in progress between those two uh, universities. And currently we are testing some algorithmic approaches on content recommendation. The first, uh, the first effort that should, that should be uh, the first challenge that, sh that should be faced is the problem with the data. As we have many information systems we, and we try to get contextual, contextual information this this barrier this challenge is actually over so we are now working on uh, different algorithmic approaches in order to recommend contents of course this is something uh, that requires really really careful thought because we are working with data, with public information, and even with user information. So we are under LGPD and GPDR uh, laws. We have laws of information protection in Europe and in Brazil, and they have many common points. And we are working, taking uh, ethics, data ethics in taking that in consideration when we are doing this, this kind of study. So it's important to, to say that. Uh, and, that's, and that's it. Uh, I think we have plenty of work to, to do yet, but we are in the, I think we are in the right uh, path and we expect to see this content 
the recommendation strategy to work on the middle of next year in Avasus. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Sejir. Uh, Sejir is, uh, is outdated in information. Uh, the users now at Avasus, which is our learning management system, our LMS, is 641,551 students uh, with uh, the certification of 884,000 certificates and uh, 1 million point five uh, enrollments in, 20, in 261 uh, active courses. Inactive courses, which are courses that the Ministry of Health Ask us not to offer anymore, just stand. And uh, so uh, you can have a look at Avasus uh, and uh, see how it works and all the courses. Uh, anybody from anywhere in the world can enter Avasus. And how you can enter Avasus, I'm going to ask Sejir that he didn't see say a word about the echo, uh, our uh, system, our uh, echo system of education which is Avasus is part of. And he's also going to speak, and I'm going to ask him to speak a little bit of some other items that we have, such as the community of practices, uh, the, 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 the platform with the uh, uh, material, written material publications that can uh, make reference uh, with this recommendation system. So it's not only the courses, uh, the, the open education resources, but other reading material, uh, films or whatever, which are in our ecosystem. And I want him to speak a little bit what the advantage is to enter with a single lo login as we have at Sabia. And also, Sidi, uh, if you can uh, point uh, uh, how this, uh, how, how you are protecting uh, individual uh, personal data, because as you said, it is very important, as you mentioned, that we have to be care very careful in the use of personal data, even if it is educational personal data, and uh, it's not as sensible as uh, health data, but also very, very important as it is personal data. Then I, I'm going to ask uh, also uh, Ignacio to speak a little bit on the ecological side of uh, your research. As I see from your formation, your qualification, you are very into environmental uh, research. So I would like you to speak a little bit uh, if there is a correlation that you have found between environment protection, uh, better living conditions, agenda 2030 and environment uh, and sustainability in your research with the obvious traps and dang. And also I would like to ask uh, uh, Pontora Gustavo to speak a little bit on this, uh, what he found that there is no discrimination with, uh, or preference or the unpreferred uh, students, uh, if he thinks, as I, I thought, uh, it would, was a very interesting finding in his research that instead of having one of the four or a list of the four in preference learning styles, there is an unpreferred uh, learning style uh, in, when dealing with open distance uh, learning. Okay, so let's start. Can we start with uh, Ignacio, please? Well, uh, thanks, Carlos, for by the by the question. Very interesting questions. Uh, right now, we are uh, in a pre preliminary, prelim preliminary. Sorry, we are starting the analysis right now, and of course, there are some points that are really important. For example. Uh, uh, dengue is very important principally because it affects urban areas, right? right? And if we get, for example, information about the, the, the population, 
we can say, for example, population, uh, the, the density of the population, uh, place of garbage, where, where they, they are situated, the neighborhoods. I think that this, this kind of uh, correlation, spatial correlation, can give us a very important uh, uh, predictors also for training the models. So uh, also we, I, I, I should include uh, these things in our future work. Uh, that I think that the, this kind of the, the situation, how, how are uh, impacted the neighborhoods uh, by this kind of, of things, if they, are, uh, they, are, they have water, current water, if they have access to, to, the, um, uh, to the system for, um, sorry, I, I lost right now the, the word, <laughs> uh, to um, if they have uh, garbage, these things, I think that, that could help. Uh, uh, what, you are, what you are telling us, Ignacio, is that the, the, the unsustainability of the environment, like garbage, bad yes. water uh, and all these things uh, can uh, can be seen in your model. Uh, so maybe the areas in which we have worse conditions, living conditions and environmental conditions, we might find the traps more full of eggs than in areas that uh, the environment is treated. Water is clean and people uh, use and consume in a more uh, uh, normal way <laughs> because sometimes we don't consume in a normal way and then we have garbage everywhere and everything so this is what you are saying yes there are a lot of factors uh, for example even if you if, if I have uh, uh, levels high levels of eggs in, in two different places maybe it impacts that we have are different because the, the conditions that we have in those neighborhoods. For example, if we have um, uh, more uh, uh, situations that propitiate the, the dissemination of the vector uh, in those neighborhoods, there are all, all the factors that we need to, to analyze right now. Uh, we are working on that data. We are, uh, and I think that we need to, to improve uh, the, 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 I think that the, 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 the analysis and the correlation and this is this kind of thing, I uh, think in this kind of variables uh, are really important for our work. Thank you, thank you, Inácio. We'll Thanks. be back to you and I'll, I'll ask Sergio and uh, Gustavo, do you have any question to uh, Inácio, uh, Sergio or Gustavo? No, no, not at all. Actually, uh, I, I like, I, I really congratulate uh, Inácio for his work because it's, it's a work that was necessary, especially in Natal that is really affected by, by dengue and his work is of great importance. Thanks. I would, just, I would just I will... suggest, Inácio, that you go further in studying a little bit uh, of the agenda 2030 and find out in the 17 uh, development goals, sustainable development goals, find the ones that can be uh, affected by your model and how you can check because you already have may, uh, many production in this area, I guess in Natal too. So then to try to correlate your model, which is very, very interesting for governments and for the population, for the community. It's important to see the map and to see the risk they have in two weeks time or in four weeks time, it's going to get worse. So if you don't clean your house, if you don't stop the water put in the wrong place, you're going to have more dengue. Uh, so it's very uh, useful in educational uh, settings uh, also to qualify workers and everything. So it's a very interesting model. Again, congratulations 
and I'll go to Sejia. We are almost coming to the end of our session. I'll come to Sejia and then to Gustavo, and I'll go back to you and you say bye-bye, and uh, uh, it's going to be over. But it's been a very interesting session. Sejia. Uh, very well. Uh, Professor, uh, I was, uh, what you asked, yes. Uh, actually, Avasus, uh, which can be ac accessed by by the link avasus.ufrn.br, um, actually is a part of uh, an ecosystem. Uh, the Avasus is the learning management system, but we have plenty uh, other systems in this ecosystem. So we have the evidence-based health portal, which is a public portal that you can find uh, scientific articles, uh, especially for uh, in the context of uh, in the context of health. And also, we have the community of practice, which is a space, a virtual space, where the health professionals, they can uh, share experiences, because Brazil is a really large country, and you have uh, different settings, different scenarios, and there is a great diversity, and there they can share experiences. And these systems, are all linked together through an ecosystem called Sabia, where uh, all these users, they are linked to it, to their uh, ID number uh, in Brazil. It's called CPF, uh, the Registry of Physical uh, Person, I think, in a rough translation. <laughs> and when they log in to Sabia, they have access to all of these systems. And that's how uh, we can, how it's possible to track their behavior in these systems and feed into the recommendation algorithm. So what, uh, what you're saying is also that uh, for, for the Italians or any other nationality that doesn't uh, know a little uh, lots of about Brazil what you are saying is that using the systems especially for example Sina I can know that the and also Kines with the Cines I can find out a medical doctor who is not performing so well in tuberculosis in his uh, population in his patients and there is another one who is working very well. So you can recommend them because of the, uh, crossing all this data. You know uh, Dr. A and Dr. B, and you can recommend one to visit the other virtually. Uh, Dr. Something, uh, why don't you talk to Dr. Something who is doing a very interesting work in tuberculosis? Is it possible? Yes, yes, it's totally possible. We we can use this uh, this approach to connect uh, more people that <clears throat> enjoys that uh, studies on on the subject of his his or her liking, or even the con uh, on subjects that are in need to be studied or to be shared considering the public needs. Again, what you are telling us is that the recommendation system that you are designing, it is blended or as you call hybrid, uh, because the government may recommend uh, in the different levels for the, for example, the city of the health authority or the state health authority or the federal may recommend something that he should study or read and also he himself can decide what he wants to do so you can have the two things one the professional uh, chooses what he wants to study and the other the government or the officials will recommend them to know a little bit more on a certain 
uh, aspect. For example, in COVID-19, uh, we had so many material. People were, uh, the professionals were not qualified because it was a new virus. So it was very important to recommend to take courses and participate in uh, discussions. Is that, is that what you were saying? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, that is correct. Uh, now, uh, as we are coming really to the end, Gustavo, could you speak a little bit if uh, you're undefined uh, uh, learning style students? Okay, uh, uh, I think it's uh, uh, the difficulty to to do this work is because uh, two two variables, uh, beh behavior and uh, learning styles, are a uh, latent variable. Uh, you can uh, have a, a, a instrument to meter this. You don't have. You, I, I don't know. Uh, for example, if uh, Kao has a learning style, just one learning style. Uh, I can... can tell you, I can tell you because I worked with learning styles for 30 years ago. Uh, I am a preferred, my preferred style is number four. And also I like number three, uh, <laughs> which is the how to do. I like very much number one, but I, it's not my preference, which is asking why, why, why? And I hate number two, which is gathering knowledge, just gathering more and more knowledge. So it's my least favorable uh, learning style. So I'm four, three, one, two. Yeah, yeah, but you have, you have uh, this learning style but you can change, uh, depends on the, what you study. What you study? If you study exactly. math, you have one, one uh, configuration. And if you study language, for example, it's another. Uh, but it's very difficult to, to meter this for each one. And on the other side, you have uh, uh, behavior. Behavior is very difficult to identify. Uh, how can I say the cow has a, a one behavior the same of Ignacio? It's difficult, but uh, we try to do this for recommend uh, the best uh, track to students to do, uh, and we we can have the barrel learning, uh, learning more fast or learning more or learning more. Um, uh, the best way, the best way to, to learn something. Yeah, there is one thing, Gustavo, that uh, when I worked with learning style at the Laboratory of Accelerative Learning at the State University of Rio de Janeiro, uh, it was back in the 80, 80, from 80 to 84. So what I could, uh, I used the uh, cope, the, I used cope and, uh, uh, we use that not to, to try to discover uh, the preferences of students. We use that with students, but it was more to train teachers that they had to prepare their classes considering all the four learning styles. So they would have to prepare activities for the different learning styles and not only to teach as they learn, because normally teachers teach as they like to learn. Yeah. So, and they have to remember that uh, hey, they are just one style. So they have to remember there are other three styles. So that's why we use, we use it, learning styles uh, surveys, just to show teachers that students are different and they have to be aware when developing material that they have to find important things. What do you think of that? It's, it's the, the, the very important point uh, because uh, if, uh, suppose I, I get the, the learning style for each one student, but I need uh, uh, to have a VRE or a professor uh, can identify this and use this for the best learning. Not the best teaching, but the best learning. 
from the student. Uh, if you can identify, you, you need to change VRL uh, for uh, possibility more one tracking for students. Your student get this tracking on other student other tracking and uh, to, to has a, a barrel uh, barrel learning barrel, barrel uh, uh, model mo yeah. model of learning. I think that one thing, uh, Gustavo, that we could go further in this discussion would be that instead of uh, uh, reinforcing preferences, it is the shore of education. Education has to develop the full potential of human beings and not reinforce their preferences. Uh, education has to work with the four learning styles. Always he will feel more comfortable in his preferred learning style. But it is very important for me that hates number two to learn how to work in, uh, with number two. This is one of the educational things which is important. And not only develop number four, which is if, be, be, for the ones who don't know, Cobb is number four student is the one who you say something, he is always saying, but if, he's always a step forward instead of following number one, number two, number three, number four. So if the teacher just gives me number four, I am at easy. I don't learn anything more, and it's a very nice life for me. So uh, <laughs> it's a yeah. very interesting uh, thing, Gustavo. I like this idea. I like this idea. And I think we should uh, include a discussion on that when we qualify our uh, writers of uh, open educational resources. I think that they should have uh, uh, a lesson or uh, two sessions with you and Douglas uh, so that they can get uh, acquainted with the, 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 the theory, which would be very important. So thank you very much, Gustavo. Uh, tell the other authors that uh, it's a very interesting work. Uh, as we always knew, it, uh, finding a correlation would uh, not be possible. Uh, we, that's not the, the focus on that, but also to find out that it is undefined for open uh, distance learning. Uh, Sejir, thank you very much, and I hope uh, your recommendation uh, system or our recommendation system, because I'm part of, uh, I'm part, I'm taking part in that work, and I'm very happy uh, to see the results. Uh, I'll go back to Gustavo and you uh, for the goodbyes. Inacio, thank you very much. I would strongly recommend that uh, we work with the Agenda 2030 uh, and uh, with the Dengue uh, model that you have uh, developed. So I return the floor to you and now we will finish the session. We have just four minutes, so be fast. One minute for each of you, starting with Inacio. Well, uh, I would like to thank Carl, Carl uh, by the nice uh, talk. Uh, thanks to also Gustavo. I also said that in this uh, uh, research, I work in collaboration also with Gustavo. And this kind of, we are working together in that. And, and thanks for the recommendation. And I think that we can, could uh, advance like we could improve our work in that duration. Thanks, uh, all of you. Thank, that thank you. Thank you to Thanks. have you with us this morning, uh, this afternoon in Rome, morning yeah. in Brazil. Uh, Sergio? Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, everyone, uh, at this virtual <laughs> meet. <laughs> so, um, Thank you, Gustavo and Nassio for, for your talks and Professor Carlos for the mediation and also uh, for the, the current work, uh, our projects together. I think I'm also hopeful that next year we will 
succeed and finish the work. And I would like to also thank all of the lies uh, because it's it's the uh, well, it's funding all the research and. Also, we have great colleagues, great professionals that work together uh, in AI. Thank you very much, uh, Sejir. Gustavo, your final words? Okay, okay. Thank you very much for, for all. And uh, Sadi, Inácio, uh, Professor Carlos, and the University of uh, the Italy, Universidade Salesiana, uh, for the opportunity. And uh, 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 our research is of the LAIS uh, because it's a, a very, very important and very good uh, laboratory to, to, uh, to do our researches. Uh, I have a very, uh, I have learning, learning every day in LAIS, and I think it's very important to, to do uh, this. Uh, I, I, uh, to, uh, Frank to, to Professor Ricardo Valentin too for the, the opportunity. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much. I would like to, to thank the organizers for the opportunity to uh, moderate this session, which has been a pleasure for me. Uh, it has been a pleasure being a researcher at LAIS, but also the other international associations that I uh, collaborate with. So thank you very much for this Inteligencia Artificial Peruna Governance Humana Perspective Educativi and Sociali. So it was a great opportunity this morning. It was great to hear about the Dengue research, the recommendation system and the learning styles. Our session is over. It was a pleasure to be with all of you. Goodbye. Ringraziamo anche noi gli amici dell'Università dell Federale di Rio Grande del Nord in Brasile per la loro interessante per diversi aspetti anche originale condivisione dell'esperienza fatta eh, all'interno della loro università dell'intelligenza artificiale nell'ambito della salute. Il loro laboratorio di innovazione tecnologica in salute è il, il luogo dove avviene questa sperimentazione. Ringraziamento al Brasile